Hmm, I wonder how to make money on Snapchat. Let's look it up. Oh, and would you look at that? I'm the first video that shows up. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can rank number one for literally any search term on YouTube. And why is that even good, you might ask? Well, it means that you can get views without having any audience to start. I mean, this video has 55,000 views and I don't even have that many subscribers. On top of that, you'll be able to consistently get views without ever having to rely on the algorithm. As you can see, this video has been getting consistent views. It's been growing literally in pretty much a straight line for the past 300 days. So once you post your videos, it can keep getting views for the rest of its life instead of just dying off right after you post it. And as you can see here, that's all thanks to YouTube search, which accounts for nearly 73% of the views on this video. So this is going to be a full course from start to finish on how to find good keywords, make the best possible video, and then optimize that video for the search algorithm so you can rank number one. And then at the very end, I'm going to be showing you some secret strategies that I use to actually monetize these videos, even though my channel isn't monetized and I can't earn any ad revenue from YouTube yet. So let's get right into it, starting with finding a good keyword. So most people try to make a video and then come up with a title, but if you're trying to get views on YouTube through search, that is not what you should do. You need to find keywords that have a lot of search volume, but have very low competition. So how do we actually do that? Well, the first step is making an account with vidIQ. I'm gonna leave a link in the description because this tool is basically necessary to do keyword research. It's completely free to start and you can just sign in with Google. So go ahead and do that right now so you can follow the next steps. So the reason you need to use vidIQ is because it tells you how much search volume different keywords are getting. So let's start by looking at the term Snapchat. Well, this has 109,000 searches per month, and you might think this is a pretty good search term. But just because it has a lot of search volume doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing to make a video about, because there might be people who are really well established making videos about this already, and it'll be really hard for you to compete. So how do we check if the keyword that we just looked up has a lot of competition? Well, first of all, I would recommend to not really look that hard at the competition score or the overall score because apparently these aren't actually that accurate. And instead to go on YouTube and actually type this term into YouTube. Now to do this next part of the analysis, you need to have the vidIQ Chrome extension downloaded as well. So make sure you download that. I'll leave the first link in the description as well. It's completely free. Once you download that, you'll have access to all the live analytics to anything you search on the YouTube search page. So we already know that the keyword that we just picked already has high search volume. And now we're gonna use the vidIQ Chrome extension to see based on the statistics, does this video also have high competition? Competition. I use a four step process and the first step in this process is seeing how many subscribers do the people who currently rank at the top have. So if I go through it, vidIQ will tell me this guy has 500,000 subscribers, this guy has 8 million, Snapchat has 1.6 million, and if we keep going through, this guy has 6.6 .6 million, 8.1. Basically these guys have so many subscribers that if we tried to rank on this search term, there's just no way we would be able to get above them because there's just way too much competition. So they don't even pass the beginning of the test, which means that we need to go back and find a more niche keyword. To do this, I highly recommend getting the premium version of vidIQ because it allows you to see related keywords, matching terms, and questions. And all of these are very important for finding the best possible keywords to make a video on. So using that, let's say I knew I wanted to make a video about Snapchat, but I needed something more niche that still has decent search volume, but something that I could actually compete on. So to find a better keyword, you could go to any of these, but for now, I'm gonna click on matching terms. This means that it's gonna show me terms that have the word Snapchat somewhere in the actual search. So if I go through, I see Roblox Snapchat. I don't have any idea how to make a video on that. We have Snapchat ads. I don't know how to make a video on that. And then we have something like Snapchat Spotlight or how to make money on Snapchat. Now this one, how to make money on Snapchat is really appealing to me because it has 20,000 searches per month, which is still pretty good. And it's a very specific question that the user needs solved. So if they see a video that's answering this question, they're very likely going to click on that video. Another way we could have found this, by the way, is going to questions. And this will show all the questions that have this term in it. And again, we see that the top question people are asking is how to make money with Snapchat. So let's click on this one, copy paste this into YouTube and see if there's high competition for it. Okay, so for some reason, all the specific analytics weren't showing on my PC. So I busted out the laptop just for you guys. So again, let's do this four step framework, which I'm about to show you guys and see if there's high or low competition for this search term. So once again, starting with the first criteria, are small channels making videos about this or is it just big channels? So let's look. Well, the first person is me and I only have 9,000 subscribers. So that's a pretty good sign. The second person has 250,000 subscribers, so that might not be a great sign. But the third ranking video comes from a channel with 1.6 thousand subscribers. The fourth ranking video comes from a channel with 4,000 subscribers. And the fifth, once again, comes from a channel with 1.6 thousand subscribers. So that means a bunch of people who have pretty small channels are still ranking near the top on this search term, which means that this passes 
passes the first criteria and we can now take a look at the other three to see if this search term does in fact have low competition and we should make a video about it. So the second criteria to look at would be something called the outlier score. So when you use the vidIQ extension, you'll see a little number right here with a little X next to it. This is the outlier score. And basically what this number means is how good is this video doing compared to the channel's average video? So this video that I made, for example, is doing 100 times better than the average video on my channel. This guy's video is doing 12 times better than the average one on his channel. And if I scroll through pretty much every video you see about making money with Snapchat is doing 10 times better than the average video on that channel. This means that if every single person who's making a video about this topic is doing better than the average video on their channel, this is probably a good indicator that this is a good keyword to make a video about. So that's the second thing to look for, a high outlier score. And I'm about to show you the third and fourth criteria. So make sure to stick around to the end and you can screenshot it so that you can use this formula every single time to find what has high or low competition. So yeah, if it's all coming from small channels with high outlier scores, here's the third thing you should absolutely look at. And it's the number right here that says VP. What this means is views per hour. So how many views per hour is this video getting? So if we look at mine, it's getting 14 views per hour. This guy's getting 15 views per hour. This guy's getting one view per hour. And this guy's getting six views per hour. Now, I know that doesn't really sound like a lot, but think about 14 views per hour. We have 14 views in an hour, 24 hours in a day, which means that we're going to be getting 336 views per day on average. Per week, that means we'd be getting 2,300 views. And per year, that means we'd be getting over 122,000 views on a video like that just to to search. So what you should really look for is videos that are getting at least five views per hour. That means you know that even videos like this are still getting views just from search. And one step better than that, you should actually go to each of these videos and take a look at what the view graph over time looks like. So on my video, for example, you can see that it pretty much just grows linearly and has been over time, which usually indicates that a lot of these views are coming from search and not from browsing features or the algorithm. Same with this guy's video. He's been growing pretty much linearly, which again means that he's probably getting views over time time, mostly from search volume. Same with this guy. And finally, same with this guy, which means that all of these videos are pretty much getting almost all of their views from search, which is a really, really good sign because that means that this keyword has not died yet and will still keep getting views if you upload a video related to this search term. And then the fourth thing you should look out for for competition is do they have something that matches the exact keyword that you found on vidIQ? So the keyword we found on vidIQ was how to make money with Snapchat. And the reason that I'm ranking above this is mainly because of the keyword actually. So if we do command F and type in the the keyword, we can see that I'm the only one that actually exactly matches the keyword that we found on vidIQ, which means that if this guy actually just changes title from make $8,000 per day posting Snapchat step-by-step -step tutorial, if he just changed this to the actual keyword, he would probably be able to rank above me solely because his keyword actually matched the search term. So if you see something with a lot of search, but no one actually has matched the keyword exactly, even if you have less subscribers than them, you have an opportunity to rank above them solely due to the fact that you actually matched the keyword exactly while other people didn't. So if you see that, that's an opportunity where the competition is low enough that you have something you can take advantage of to actually get more views than everyone else in this category. So once you find something with high search volume on vidIQ, those are the four criteria you should use. I'll put it on screen now. That will indicate to you whether this is something that has high competition and if it's something that you should actually make a video on. If it meets all four of those criteria, it's definitely something you should make a video on. You're pretty much guaranteed to rank above everyone and people are searching for it, which means they're going to probably click on your videos before everyone else's. So you went to vidIQ, you went through a bunch of matching terms or questions that people are asking, and you found a search term that's good. You verified that it doesn't have that much competition. What's the next step? Well, the next step is actually the video itself. And there's two ways that you can do things better than how everyone else has posted to beat the competition and further rank above people on the search algorithm. The first one, and this is the most obvious one, is to have a thumbnail with a higher click-through rate. So I actually saw another opportunity to capitalize pretty much just off the thumbnail. And I'll show you how I did this. So I looked up the term Snapchat, and once again, I went to questions, and I saw another question with decent search volume, which was how to get followers on Snapchat. I copy-pasted this into YouTube, and I saw that pretty much the best thumbnail looked like this. Or if I scroll through, this video with 40K views does not even have a good thumbnail. So I realized there's an opportunity for me here to post a video about this and rank above people 
simply because my thumbnail is better and I have a higher click-through rate. So you can see here that I basically did a version of this guy's thumbnail who's currently ranking at the top and posted an improvement to it that's just a little bit better. It's just more professional looking and can more clearly see how many followers the person actually has. And then uploaded this video five days ago and you can already see I'm getting pretty close to him and I might rank above him pretty soon. For all of my videos, I basically just look at what the best thumbnail for that search topic is yet. And then I send it to my thumbnail guy and tell him he just has to basically make an improvement off of the current best ranking thumbnail. As long as we can do a version of the thumbnail that's already there, but actually make it better in some way by making the text more clear or by making the face more professional looking, then I know pretty conclusively we can get a better click through rate than they normally can. And then the next way you can improve the video is by making a higher average view duration. So that means you need to retain people all the way from the beginning till the end of this video. One of my favorite ways to do this is to continuously hint at something at the end of the video. So in this video, for example, I've hinted at how you can actually use this strategy to make money without having a monetized YouTube channel. And you're probably still waiting, curious on how I make passive income with this strategy. I'm gonna show you, but I'm only gonna show you at the end of the video, and that's what keeps you watching and keeps my average view duration higher than other people's, which is gonna get me more total views and rank me higher on search. So once you've found the keyword that you're gonna make your video on and optimize your video, there's actually one last thing, which is the SEO part, optimizing your video for search. Now, I know I left this step to the end, but you actually still wanna do this part before you even make your video. So as you can see here, all the videos I have planned, I have the exact title that I'm gonna use mapped out before I make it. And normally I map out some other things which I'm about to get into. So to optimize your video for search on YouTube, I once again have a four step framework. I'm gonna explain it and then I'm gonna leave a picture of all four criteria that you need to meet at the end so you can screenshot it and just follow it every single time. So the first thing which I kind of went over is you need to have the exact keyword somewhere in your title. So for example, if the keyword is how to make money with Snapchat and I know this has 21,000 searches per month, when I type this in, I need to make sure that somewhere in my video's title, it has how to make money with Snapchat. The way I did it was I put this at the beginning, how to make money with Snapchat. And then I indicated that it was Snapchat spotlights. So I just added that. And then I added 2025 after. So people know that it's up to date. So take the keyword and slap it somewhere in the title of your video. And if you need to just add a word or two or some parentheses, just so it's more readable to the viewer. The second thing is have matching terms in the description. So you see when I command F this, it doesn't just say how to make money with Snapchat on the top, but it also has it in the description right here, which will also rank it higher on search. And the key here is to hide a bunch of different search terms into the actual description. So what I do is once again, I go to vidIQ, which again, I'm gonna leave the link to vidIQ in the description so you can use this completely for yourself. I type in my keyword that I'm actually gonna use, and then I go to related keywords, and I find some that I think will be relevant to the video. So Snapchat spotlight money will probably be relevant. How to earn money on Snapchat, this probably is also relevant. Snapchat spotlight payout, this makes sense. And sure, how to get paid with Snapchat Spotlight. All of these terms are things that my viewer might have been searching and I want to catch any of the people that slipped through the cracks and didn't put in this main search term. So I'm going to select all four of these. I'm going to click copy and then I'm just going to go to chat GPT. Then I'm going to paste in the search terms and say weave this into a sentence that makes sense for my YouTube video description. It's gonna write a description that actually has all of these search terms in it. And then all you need to do is copy paste this into your description. As you can see here, I did it on this video where I say, in this video, I go over how to make money with Snapchat spotlights, da da da. So do this and that way you can catch people who slip through the cracks on other search terms that are pretty related to what you're already talking about. The third criteria is having a better thumbnail. And we talked about this, but if you have a higher click-through rate than other people, you're just going to rank higher than them because YouTube sees it as more relevant. And then the fourth thing I do is tags, which as far as I'm concerned, don't really really matter that much, but I still do it anyway, just to be safe. So all you have to do is copy paste the title of your video and you go to rapidtags.io slash generator. I'll leave the link to this in the description. It's completely free. Then you're going to copy paste your title in and it's going to automatically create a bunch of tags that you can use for your video. I then click copy the tags and then I go right back to my YouTube channel and then I just go here and then I paste all the tags in and that's it. And that's my four step criteria for SEO. So now you have my criteria for finding the best possible keyword and then doing the best search engine optimization to actually rank number one for that keyword. But before I end this video, I have to give you what I promised you this whole time, which is how do I actually make money with this strategy? Well, the way that I do it is by something called affiliate marketing. This is when a company pays you commission if you can get someone to buy through their link. Now, specifically, I do this with tools that pay a lifetime recurring commission. So that means when someone signs up, they subscribe to a service and they pay for that service every single month. And I get a portion of that money that they pay every single month, which makes this 
this an actual form of passive income. Now, if you're smart, you'll notice that this video is actually doing that. I'm talking about vidIQ in this video, and the link in the description is an affiliate link that earns me lifetime commission anytime one of you uses it. But I'll give an example just to show the best way that this can be done and how I've actually done it to make so far hundreds of dollars per month in pretty passive income. So the first thing you need to do is there needs to be some sort of product or subscription that you're talking about in your video. I prefer subscriptions because they can pay lifetime commission and I usually make sure to talk about things that I actually use. So I'll use my how to make money with Snapchat video as an example. So in this video, I talked about the tool that I use to grow my Snapchat, which is called repurpose.io. It's basically a platform that lets you automatically repost all your content from one platform to another social media platform. I use this tool and I automatically reposted my TikToks to Snapchat and that's what grew my Snapchat. So that's why I talked about it in this video and I recommended it to people because it helps you grow like crazy without doing any work really. And I did this in this video with repurpose.io where I had the affiliate link to it in the description. Now from here, a bunch of people signed up through my link and now I'm making passive income with it. If you check here, my earnings for the last 30 days with repurpose.io affiliate was $263. And again, that's without me doing anything since I uploaded this YouTube video. And pretty much all of the people who are paying me right here are on a monthly recurring subscription. So they're gonna pay me this amount or more next month. So first of all, find a tool that you actually use and see if they have an affiliate link. If they do, you can center your video around this tool or solving a problem for the viewer where the tool is actually required. So with me talking about vidIQ in this video, for example, the tool vidIQ is literally required for you guys to do the right keyword research. So for you to solve the problem that you came here for, which is ranking number one on YouTube, you're gonna need to use vidIQ, which means you're gonna need to pay for it, which means that I'm gonna make commission when you buy it. So that's the first piece of advice. Center your videos around a product. And then secondly, you need to look for search terms where it doesn't actually have high search volume, but it has high intent of the person paying. So let me show you an example of a useless search term to rank number one on. So ranking number one on this search, the best free AI tools is probably not a good idea because you might be able to get a ton of views under this search term, but it doesn't matter because anyone who's searching this is likely someone who doesn't have money to spend. They're probably like some 12 or 13 year old who wants to try to use AI mid journey to generate images. Even if you get a lot of people to watch your video, pretty much no one's actually going to convert. A better version of this would be something like how to clone your voice with AI. This is a video that I have coming out soon. It'll probably be out by the time this video is uploaded. And this is a better search term because people who are looking this up have an objective. Their objective is to clone their voice with AI. This shows high intent to actually solve this problem. And if they want that problem solved, they're much more likely to be someone who's willing to pay for it than if you rank for this exact search term, but with the word how to do it for free in it because people who wanna do it for free are not likely intent on buying. And so use that information to your advantage. I've done this and it works and you can take a look at my channel and see how I'm scaling this idea up on all the videos that I've been posting because pretty much all of my recent videos are gonna be showing tools with affiliate links that you guys can use. And while you're sitting here watching this video, I'm gonna be making passive income from those videos. So pretty much that wraps up the full course of mastering SEO on YouTube and making sure your videos rank number one in 2025. We went from using vidIQ to find good terms, doing competition research on YouTube, making the video, optimizing that video for search, and then using those videos to promote tools that can make you passive income. This is the full step-by-step -step guide and I highly recommend this strategy. I hope you learned a lot from this video and thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss more good info from me and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.